Hello again, and thanks for uh, joining me here at soundoptic.com for another uh, Pro Tools tutorial. Uh, my name is Anthony Zeller, and today I'm going to talk to you about uh, spotting uh, video for spotting QuickTime video rather into the Pro Tools timeline. Um, it's obviously very useful if you're uh, working on projects that have already been captured, hopefully, and you can work off a proxy file or whatever of a, perhaps a higher quality video if you're using Final Cut Pro or Avid. Um, and you render out uh, a work copy here for all us audio folk, uh, this is how you would begin to spot it into the timeline so uh, you could use it and be uh, time code accurate for everybody involved in the session. Um, I'm not going to get quite that detailed today. I'm just going to uh, use this little five-minute snippet of a uh, James Bond movie that I have that actually happens to have a burn-in window uh, on the video itself just so we have a, a good example of how this uh, how it would work in the real world so to speak. So uh, first things first, you probably want to uh, open this video up and just to see what sort of uh, size it is and what it looks like and frame rates and all that things, all those things. So just double click on it and let QuickTime open it up. This is not a very good quality. I just rendered out a, an example here, but if we uh, skip through, we can see that there actually is some picture. Press play. Looks like a James Bond movie. Okay. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and hit Apple Eye and get info on this guy, see what makes it tick. Um, it says here that it's 29.97 in the frame rate, uh, which is good, although it doesn't tell us drop versus non-drop, so we'll have to investigate that here, and I'll show you in just a second. Uh, the other thing worth noting is that if you look in the format, it'll tell us that it's got a, a stereo analog, or excuse me, <laughs> stereo uh, audio channel at 44.1 embedded into this video. Uh, the other telltale that it's got audio is that the audio meters show up. And obviously when I pressed play, we heard it coming out the front of the Mac uh, on the other side of the room. So we know that there's audio built in. Uh, now in order to check for drop versus non-drop, the rule of thumb there, I believe, uh, if I remember my schooling well enough, is that drop frame drops two frames every minute except the tenth minute. So if we go and find right where we roll over on a, a minute here, Okay, and uh, you can use the arrow keys in QuickTime to move forward through the video. Uh, we'll get to 29. There we go. So you'll see that it jumps from uh, 1 minute there, and uh, or excuse me, from 59.29 to 1 minute and uh, 2 frames. So we know that this, this particular one is drop frame. So 29.97 drop is uh, the video we're going to be working with. And uh, this secondary burn-in window is uh, for if we were working in 24 frame. Uh, it's just there for reference, so we can ignore it for our purposes. So I'm going to quit QuickTime there. I'm going to go to Pro Tools, and I'm going to create a new session here. The beginning of uh, the beginning of our work on this picture. So uh, the new session dialog opens up. I'm going to create from a blank here. Um, broadcast Wave 48K 24-bit, and uh, my favorite I.O. setup. Click on OK, and it's going to prompt me to name the session. I will just call it Video. And uh, I'm saving it in my tests folder, which is on my storage drive. And it's also uh, valuable to note that uh, it's always a good idea to um, keep your video file and your audio files on two separate drives. And that's mainly because video files can be quite taxing on a disk and a bus system. So it's probably best to leave it on a separate drive on a separate bus, if at all possible, than your audio. Or you may get DAE errors, you may uh, notice that it'll... Uh, choke up when recording, uh, all sorts of crazy things can happen. So, um, if it's a particularly small video, if it's if it's compressed, if it's an H.264 or something, you might be able to get away with running it on the same drive if you don't have a high audio track count. But just keep in mind that if you have the ability to do so, keeping video separate from audio is always a good idea. So I'm going to save uh, my audio here, location to my uh, internal um, storage drive. So now the first thing we want to do is to make sure that the Pro Tools uh, session itself is set up to the correct frame rate. You'll see that I have a ruler visible here at the top, and if we hit Apple and the 2 on the numeric keypad, our session setup window will pop open. And you'll see here time code rate is, in fact, 2997 drop, so that's good. If it was uh, something else here, you'll see the timeline can jump back and forth. Uh, but we want to make sure that we're in drop frame because that's the video that we'll be using, as we earlier identified. So. I'm going to uh, go to File here, click on Import Video, 
and I'm going to navigate to where that video is. In this case, it's on my desktop. Uh, go ahead and click on it and open it up. And Pro Tools uh, Movie Viewer. Oops, I'm getting ahead of myself. First thing is video import options. It'll ask you uh, where you would like to do what you would like to do with it on the session. And uh, I'm gonna obviously want to use it, so I'll just have it put it on a new track. Um, it'll ask whether you want it to be spotted to a, a selection or to a yet to be determined time load code location or to the session start. Uh, at the moment, selection and session start are the same thing. Uh, I'm at the very head of the program here. And we noted that there was audio in the file, so I want to go ahead and have Pro Tools extract that. Uh, so I'm going to say OK. And now our viewer window pops up. And another one asking for the destination uh, for the audio files it's about to extract and uh, on a valid audio drive. So the valid audio drive, uh, it defaults to being my audio files folder for the session I created, which is exactly what I want. So I'm going to click Choose. And now because that uh, embedded audio was actually at 44.1 here, it's going to have to convert it to 48K to match my session. Um, it will not change the speed at, at which it plays, by the way. It will do a straight over conversion and keep the quality of the speed the same. So in just a moment, we'll be done chugging along here. Wonderful. And you'll see that it created a new track now for my audio files as well. So if I zoom way in here, you'll see that the video track has appeared in my timeline. I can click through it here and I can jump from one place to another. Um, but you'll notice obviously that the timecode uh, location in Pro Tools and the burn-in window do not match. So we want that to match first and foremost. Um, you'll also notice here you can see frames are just blocks. I prefer to keep it in blocks, uh, especially if the viewer window is open. Um, helps with screen redraw too if you're zoomed way in and it's got to try to redraw frames of video all the time and uh, if you've got an older system it could be a little taxing on that so so now I'm gonna take my insertion tool here and I'm just gonna try to find the beginning of one hour or as close to possible to one hour we'll say that's pretty close uh, we want to look at our nudge values this is the way we're gonna fine-tune it the the end result is to get uh, the one hour uh, frame of the video within as close as we can which in our case is a hundredth of a frame as close to that as possible. So I'm going to switch my nudge value here at the moment just to like one frame. And uh, when you do that, you can use the plus and minus keys next to the numeric keypad, and it will jump forward or backward in time by that nudge value. So I'm going to cross over the one hour threshold here by one frame and then go right back. So I know that I'm within a frame. And I'm going to switch it to quarter frames and go back. Oh, we were right on it. Great. So I'm going to now switch it to hundredths of a frame or subframes and I'm going to hit the minus key. Well, look at that. We just happen to be right on top of it. So now that we know that this point right here is the closest we within one one hundredth of a frame of being right on top of the transition to one hour. So that's as close as we can get in Pro Tools. So um, I'm going to I'm going to number one make sure that in slip mode it does the same thing. Good. I'm going to um, put in uh, a sync point right here. And if you're not familiar with sync points, um, I will be covering it in a future tutorial in a little more detail. But for now, just know that you can hit Apple and the comma on the Macintosh. And you'll see this little arrow. Uh, it's just like making a tick mark on a, on a film, perhaps, so you know where you're at. Um, now I'm going to switch over to spot mode. And uh, I want to spot it so that this sync point is exactly one hour in my Pro Tools timeline. So I'll click on the hand click on the file, and you'll see that because I entered a sync point, it will default to trying to uh, have me enter that information. So I will put in one hour, and I'm actually using subframes here in my typing, so I need to put one zero 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 for uh, one hour, zero minutes, zero seconds, zero frames, and zero subframes, as close as I can get. We'll click OK, and you'll see it shoots off into the distance. If I zoom way out. Here we are over here. Now there's a trick to getting the audio file lined up perfectly with the video file. Um, if you get into uh, slip mode here and you put your insertion tool anywhere in the timeline uh, ahead of the video, hit the tab key. Tab will tab you through edits. In my case there are no edits so it's just the beginning and the end. Um, but if you tab to the beginning we know that we're at the very head of this video file. And you can use a little key command here where you use the hand tool and hold down the control key on the Macintosh 
and click on the audio file and you will see that it will jump right to the front of this timeline, right where my insertion point is. Just like magic. All right, so now we know that our audio file and video file are lined up perfectly together, so they should be in sync, assuming that it was in sync when we uh, originally captured it. Oops, and I will monitor out 7 and 8 so I can hear it here. Ooh. Sounds like James Bond. Perfect. And you will see that uh, if we put it in grid mode here, I'm gridding to uh, frames. Anywhere I click now, I should be able to see this primary timecode window matches my Pro Tools timeline. So we did it correctly, thankfully. I like to uh, lock my regions once they're in place, if I know that I'm not going to edit them. But uh, that's pretty much it. That's spotting uh, video in Pro Tools. Very useful thing. So uh, hope all goes well in your video adventures here in Pro Tools. But uh, for now, I'm going to sign off on this tutorial and say thank you for watching. So please uh, join us again for uh, additional Pro Tools tutorials or check out our archive of them at uh, www.soundoptic.com or on YouTube. Thanks for watching.